Hello everyone, I am Demented Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a new commander from Theros Beyond Death, Eutropia the Twice Favored. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. Other ways you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. Patrons get early access to scheduled videos on YouTube and higher tier patrons get access to the VIP section of my Discord server as well. You can find a link to that down in the description too. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Eutropia is a 2-2 human wizard for 1 generic, 1 green, and 1 blue. She has Constellation, which is an ability that triggers when an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. When it does, she puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature and that creature gains flying until end of turn. This might seem like a casual ability, but don't let that fool you. This is going to be a semi-competitive combo deck that takes advantage of enchantments entering the battlefield and using plus 1 plus 1 counters hijinxes to combo out. Since the deck has a theme of using enchantments for value, then what greater value than cantripping when they enter the battlefield? Argothian Enchantress, Verduran Enchantress, and Citesan Champion are three creatures that draw you a card whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield. As a bonus, Citesan Champion gets a plus one plus one counter, making it scarier each time. Keep in mind though that the card draw isn't optional, so you do run the risk of decking yourself when comboing off. But we'll discuss that aspect of the deck soon enough. Eidolon of Blossoms and Enchantress's Presence are enchantments that do the same thing. Although the Eidolon is also a creature, it's enchantment type that synergizes most with the deck. Again, when triggered, the card draw isn't optional so keep that in mind when comboing off. Shoal Kraken is the only trigger that has a you may clause and that's probably because it's technically a loot effect instead of just straight up draw. That being said, looting can still be useful if drawing into too many lands or if it'll help combo off for the win. Fathom Mage takes advantage of enchantments entering the battlefield but in a more roundabout way. When Eutropia triggers and places a plus one plus one counter on the mage, we then draw a card off of it. Either way, the mage also has evolved, so bigger creatures entering the battlefield will also trigger it. You can also copy any of these creatures with Protean Thaumaturge anytime an enchantment enters our battlefield. If not these creatures, you can also use it to copy a useful creature controlled by an opponent or maybe a huge beater. The last card in this section is Armorcraft Judge. If enough of our creatures have at least one plus one plus one counter on it, we can draw into a bunch of cards when it enters the battlefield. In order to take advantage of all the card draw, the deck is running Reliquary Tower and Thought Vessel in order to not have to discard down to seven cards during our cleanup step. Running the tower in a two color deck won't color screw us and the vessel has the added bonus of also tapping for colorless mana. Thanks to all these constellation triggers, the best enchantments for the deck are those that can recur themselves. Shimmering Wings and Wilp Silk are the cheapest ones to this effect. They both cost only 1 mana to cast and 1 mana to return to hand. That means that for either double green or double blue we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on our creature and give it flying with Utopia or draw a card thanks to the previously mentioned effect. Notwithstanding, the deck is also running Viscerid Armor and Volrath's Curse. These auras cost twice as much both to cast and bounce when compared to Shimmering Winds and Whip Silk, but they get the job done. The deck has ways to reduce costs and generate mana so they're not so sluggish in the deck. Broken Fall and Molting Skin are free to bounce back to our hands but cost 3 mana to cast. They're essentially the same card with different names. What's great about regeneration is that you don't have to wait until a creature is going to die to activate them. You can just put a regeneration shield on a creature when you bounce them. This makes them cheaper to bounce and cast than the previously mentioned Viscerate Armor and Volrath's Curse. Aspect of Mongoose, Rancor, and Fool's Demise are three more auras that return to our hand but you can't activate them to do so. They only return to hand when going to the graveyard from the battlefield. This is still great because on their own they're great auras but become even better thanks to the interactions and synergy in the deck. If they're destroyed or unattached to the creature they're enchanting, they just return to our hand for us to get more value from them. We get even more value from these enchantments thanks to Leyline of Anticipation. We can bounce these enchantments in a turn that isn't ours, but with the ley line we can cast them outside of our turn too. So we're able to take advantage of these enchantments while leaving mana open to responses. What responses? Well we might need to protect our board state or our game ending combos, so being able to keep mana open until the beginning of the end step before ours is very useful. Even then, to really protect our combos we might have to go with free counter spells like Force of Will, Pact of Negation, and Force of Negation. We can't cheat Force of Negation during our own turn, but if we manage to combo off in someone else's turn thanks to the Leyline, then we can definitely use it to protect our combo then. 
Counterspell, Negate, Mana Drain, and Swan Song are four more counter spells in the deck, and these are pretty much self-explanatory. However, this is an Enchantments Matters deck, so we do also have counter magic on enchantments. Ashok's Erasure, Dows, and Life Force are such cards. Ashok's Erasure is overcosted when compared to the instance for countering spells, but it is an enchantment, so it triggers a lot of our cards. Also, if we counter a spell that opponents might play, then they can't cast them. Granted, Commander is a singleton format, so it won't affect the owner of the spell, but maybe you countered a Soul Ring. Dows and Life Force are hosers in the deck, but they're still great because red and black are the colors of removal. Not only that, but if any opposing commander has any of those colors, then we can just keep them from being successfully cast. The main point of running these counter spells is to protect our combo though, which is why the deck is also running Dosan the Falling Leaf and City of Solitude. While on the board, no one can play during our turn so we can combo off where we free. Keep in mind this also means that we can't play spells or activate abilities during our opponent's turns, so we can also allow them to combo off uninterrupted. So only cast these spells on your turn before you know you're going to combo off. But as I mentioned before, we'll discuss that soon enough. We can also control the board by getting rid of things after they've resolved. Beast Within and Scour from Existence can't get rid of any permanent so they're definitely great in the deck to get rid of any problem without Shroud, Hexproof, Protection, etc. Steelbane Hydra also destroys things but is limited to artifacts and enchantments. Thanks to Eutropia, it doesn't have to only rely on the plus one plus one counters it enters the battlefield with since she can give it one with her ability. Similarly, Spike Weaver also benefits from Eutropia's generosity. Spike Weaver protects us from aggro strategies but can also be a political tool in order to protect an opponent from a horde attack in order to garner favors later on. Other ways of controlling the board is by returning everything to everyone's hand. Thus the deck is running Cyclonic Rift and Devastation Tide. Overloading Cyclonic Rift is obviously going to be a pain for our opponents, but Devastation Tide also helps us. We have a lot of cards that trigger when things enter the battlefield, so if returned to our hand, we can recast them later for value. Other ways of taking advantage of Eutropia's ability is maximizing the plus one plus one counters. Pure Imaginative Rascal and Hardened Scales each increase the amount of plus one plus one counters placed by one. This might seem insignificant, but it's actually key for one of the combos in the deck. Either way, without the combo, they make Utopia place two plus one plus one counters each time, and that can really add up. Besides, Hardened Scales is an enchantment that only costs one mana, so that already makes it a shoe in in this kind of deck. Doubling Season and Primal Vigor are also included to double the amount of plus one plus one counters given by Utopia. Primal Vigor also helps opponents, so that might help it last longer on the field than Doubling Season. It's precisely these plus one plus one counter doubling effects that allows us to combo off. So let's see how the deck is able to do so. Two key pieces are Crystalline Crawler and Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, Eutropia can give the Crawler a plus one plus one counter. If that enchantment is one of the self-balancing auras, we'd be able to generate infinite mana with the counter doublers. If we draw a card each time we play an enchantment, we can do that infinitely many times and then whip on a fifth Jace. Let's see how this happens. Assume we have Enchantress's Presence, Jace, Eutropia, Hardened Scales, and Crystalline Crawler on the battlefield with Shimmering Wings in hand. Let's remove a plus one plus one counter from the Crawler to cast the Aura. It enters the battlefield enchanting whatever creature, doesn't matter. This triggers Eutropia, putting two plus one plus one counters on the Crawler thanks to Hardened Scales replacement effect. We remove another one of those counters to bounce the aura to our hand. We then remove the second counter it received to recast it. This gives us a loop of being able to infinitely cast Shimmering Wings. With Enchantress's presence or any other of the effects that trigger when an enchantment enters the battlefield to draw us a card, and we draw a card each time. With Jason play, we win the game. This might seem incredibly convoluted since it requires 5 cards to win. However, keep in mind that most of these cards can be substituted with others and still achieve the same effect so the deck does have some consistency in assembling such a combo or a similar one. It's also digging through the deck so you'll have responses in hand to protect the combo. Even then, this isn't the only way to win the game. You can also make a large enough group of infinitely large creatures and swing in for the win. Herald of Secret Streams makes it so those creatures with plus one plus one counters on them are unblockable so you only need one huge creature per opponent to also win via combat damage. Eutropia can also just put the plus one plus one counters on herself and swing in for commander damage if no one has a flyer in play to block her. Obviously the deck isn't just going on what it draws either. It needs to be fast in order to set up for the win as quickly as possible. Being green means having access to ramp, so the deck's running Farseek, Nature's Lore, and 3 Visits. I know I mention these in almost all my videos where the color identity is green combined with other colors, 
but they're just so good because they can ramp for double typed lands also. Sky Shroud Claim and Ranger's Path can also ramp for double type lands, but ramping for twice as many lands means costing twice as much as the previously mentioned ramp spells. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach are good to run here because we have ways of keeping a hand of limitless size, but we're also putting a land into our hand in case we want to loot it away with the previously mentioned Shoal Kraken. Or we can just play them thanks to enchantments like Dryad of the Elysian Grove, Burgeoning, and Exploration. The Dryad and Exploration allow us to play an additional land during our turn, while Burgeoning allows us to drop a land during an opponent's turn when they play their own lands. These cards being enchantments also synergize as well with the deck. And we're drawing a ton of cards here, so it's great to be able to drop a couple of lands each time we do dig through our deck. As a bonus, the Dryad gives all of our lands each basic land type. In terms of mana production, the deck is running the Great Henge and Soul Ring. Both of these mana rocks tap for a double mana. The Great Henge isn't that hard to cast a big discount in this deck since Utropia is making our creatures bigger with each enchantment entering the battlefield. It also gives a plus one plus one counter to each non-token creature entering the battlefield under our control, so that's also a plus in this deck. The life gain is just a nice touch. Dire Sage and Incubation Druid are both excellent synergistic mana dorks for the deck. Dire Sage can tap to add a ridiculous amount of green mana with all of the plus one plus one counters we can put on it. Incubation Druid doesn't even need to adapt in order to get the plus one plus one counter on it, so it should be able to use its ability even easier in this deck thanks to Utropia giving it a plus one plus one counter, or even with the Great Henge giving it the plus one plus one counter. Fertilid also takes advantage of all the plus one plus one counters. Fertilid is literally a rampant growth on a body. You just pay two mana and remove a plus one plus one counter from it in order to ramp a basic land from your library. Again, thanks to Utropia, you can use its ability enough times out of it. Cloud Key and Herald of the Pantheon don't provide mana per se, but they are used to reduce the costs of enchantments. This is generally better than just adding mana, since it's essentially adding mana each time you cast an enchantment. These effects are great for the self-balancing enchantments that cost more than one mana. As a bonus, the Herald gains us one life for each enchantment we cast. The rest of the deck is just the lands. It's running Tropical Island, Breeding Pool, Waterlogged Grove, City of Brass, Command Tower, and Mana Confluence, as well as 11 basic forests and islands. It's also running all 8 fetches in order to thin the deck of lands as well as color fixing. Now, you don't need to run Tropical Island, the fetches, Mana Drain, Force of Will, and Doubling Season in this deck. You can actually build this deck on a budget and have it run almost exactly as I have. Just removing those 12 cards alone I just mentioned significantly decreases the price of the deck. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Utropia the Twice Favored. This deck might seem straightforward in the sense that all you have to do is dig through the deck, play enchantments, and keep mana open to have responses at the ready. But it's not too linear to be boring, nor is it too convoluted to be a challenging deck to pilot. As is, it's a lot of fun to pilot and play regardless. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Mented Kirby, and happy brewing.